for joining us. I'm Robin Wallace. This is I in Columbus, and I'm in the studio today with Mike Turner. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Robin. You have Appreciate several it. things to talk about, so I'm going to get right to it. Okay? okay, you are from the Columbus Phoenix City Inventors Association. Correct. Let's start with that. What is that? Well, Columbus Phoenix City Inventors Association is a nonprofit organization that started back in 2010, and we also have our 501c organization called Gala Inventors Group. That is an organization that I'm the executive director of, and it helps fund the activities that Columbus Phoenix City Inventors Association is doing here in the Columbus school system. How did this come about? There obviously was a need. Yes, obviously within the school systems, and I was a former teacher years ago, so I enjoyed talking to kids, um, just finding out what their needs are, what their concerns are, what they like, dislike. And I realized that in the school system, they do have a STEM program. And with the STEM program, the students help create different projects, science projects that they've come to invent. And our organization got involved back in 2003 actually 2012, for the last four years. And what we're doing is we're going into the school system, mm -hmm. talking to the kids about science and STEM. And when we do that, we're realizing that we have very creative kids in our school system. Now, what age groups are you talking about? We're working currently with kids in middle and high school. Okay. And in the school system, every year, they do have to put on a science project. And it gets displayed every year Bicycles with um, the Mellon High School students, and they present their science projects at the Columbus or CSU. And during that time period, we go in and talk to the students about being creative, coming up with different projects that they can display at the science fair. Now, our organization is a co-sponsor of that particular science fair along with CSU. And what we do is we observe approximately 80 to 100 science projects that are on display. Our organization specifically chooses three student winners, first, second, and third prize students with their projects that have patent potential. And what we do for those students is we work with them to uh, receive prizes and awards from a lot of businesses in town. They also receive uh, plaques, uh, they also receive trophies, and a lot of gift cards and products from stores here in Columbus. And we're talking about high-end stores, like see it, well, no, <laughs> no longer Sears, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Target, Walmart, mm -hmm. a lot of the restaurants in town, uh, Red Lobster, Old Charlie's. I mean, there's a lot of them that participate and provide prizes and awards to the students. Uh, every year, we present those students along with their parents and teachers in front of the mayor, and it's usually around May. And the mayor proclaims May 5th as Student Innovation Day. So we're very happy to be able to do that for the students. But the problem that we see right now is that in the past, the schools were able to have the science fair projects within the classroom. Okay. And I was surprised this year that it's no longer a student project in the classroom. Why is that? The only conclusion that I can come up with is the fact that the school system has given the teachers a lot more work to do. And what they're doing, in my mind, is that they're focusing on getting the kids to pass certain tests. Now, there is a program that they have to pass, which is called, well, the acronym is CCPR, College uh, Career uh, Performance and Readiness Index. Okay. And that particular um, test is a statewide test. And the schools have to have at least 60 points or above. Now, as you may know, there are approximately seven schools that are on the failing list here in Columbus. And fortunately, one of the schools that we've been to, uh, even though they're on the failing list, they made some significant improvements. So they told me that as far as 2017, they would probably come off that list. But there are six other schools that are on that list and have a long way to go to be able to get off that list. So that's the problem right there. What we found in our research is that in 2013, there were approximately 65,000 kids in the, in the juvenile delinquency program across the state. Mm -hmm. And being the second largest city in the state, there is some of those numbers with our kids here in Columbus. In 2014, there were approximately 1,600 juveniles here in Columbus. Now, they're going through um, 
some suspensions, some intake programs, but the bottom line is they are involved in the judicial system. In 2015, there were a 3% increase in those numbers of juveniles. So we're concerned about that, and we're trying to change those numbers to make it more positive for our kids to not be involved in that. Now, the statistics show that the reasons why they become juveniles is several. One is bullying in school. Another one is they're boring. Mm -hmm. Another one is drugs, gangs, family issues, and mental illness. But what we think is if we can steer them in a different direction, then we can make a more positive effect, not only on the community, but for the families themselves. What we've also realized is that, I saw an article in today's paper, is that the state of the educational system and what we need to anticipate for 2017. Right now, we're not in a position to be able to help our businesses in town because the kids are coming out and they're not trained. Mm -hmm. They don't have right. the skills needed to, I guess, help these employees. So what we're trying to do is we've developed a program that teaches kids how to think deductively and inductively reasonings. And it's a year-long program that we're trying to institute in the schools whereby we sit down with them and help them think through things, get their minds on drugs and gangs and all of that. And the second part of the program is to be able to have them start thinking about coming up with solutions to everyday problems that we have by creating project, products and services. Now, I'll give you a couple of examples. We have um, a student who created what we call a water desolator. Uh, he was in middle school, now he's at the high school. And what that does is it takes dirty water and converts it to clean water. And he was one of our student winners. And we even had uh, Columbus Water Works to try to analyze the water to make sure that it was pure enough. Now this product has worldwide potential. It's not a product that serves just one person. It serves a whole entire community. So that particular project was a big winner for us in terms of helping the student kind of move his project forward. We have another student who works, not works, but goes to school now at Columbus State. Um, I'm sorry, she's at Columbus High School, but she came from the middle school, and she was one of our student winners um, last year. Now she's at um, the high school. She is the only person who wants to compete in this year's science fair, which is gonna be held February 7th, which is next month. And she's the only one. Nobody else is interested. And that's why we're concerned that there's other several schools that are not gonna be participating because now they have made it voluntary. It's not part of the classroom instruction. And we're trying and so to capture those. so many of these those. kids don't even know what they're missing. Absolutely, we have so many creative kids. It's right. amazing to right. us. But and we to need put to put that creativity to use is what needs to happen. Absolutely, and that's what we're trying to do when we go into the classrooms. Because again, we need to prepare our kids between the ages of 13 to 18 is the vulnerable time where these kids will probably get into trouble. And it's sad to know that we're still in January and we already have two murders. So we feel that if we don't start them young, redirecting them, then we're gonna be in trouble. Our businesses right now are already in trouble because they can't find qualified candidates to fill their positions. So again, what we're trying to do is to teach them to go a different direction, a positive direction, so that they will learn to trade, they will learn to skill, and do all these things that are necessary in the business world when they get into the business world. So again, we have a program that will help them, prepare them to be able to do that, plus be creative, become leaders in their community, and do a lot of positive things. And that's what we're gearing ourselves to work towards helping these kids. So how are you getting this program into the schools? How are you working to do that? Well, we're talking to some of the schools right now about doing more than just going in and talking to the schools. We're trying to get a program involved in that. Now, we've been talking to some of the churches in town, okay. and they're more receptive to what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we feel that our first entry into doing this will be the churches. We're gonna be looking into after-school programs to get involved in that because it's, again, a two-part program. But we gotta get the kids to think about positive things, be creative in the STEM programs, 
and create things that are amazing to solve problems. And when we go into schools, we talk about how, for example, you got Steve Jobs, you got Mark Zuckerberg, and all these famous people. They started just where our kids are right now, in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And if we don't encourage them. But they them, want more. They want so much more than that. Exactly. And we got to give that to right, them. Right, right. Yeah, and if we're not we're feeding them, do. then they get lost. E absolutely. But we can't do it alone. We need the help and support of not only the parents, but the schools, also the businesses and town, because they're going to benefit from all of this. Mm -hmm. But we need the help. We need volunteers. We need financial support to expand the program. We need all of that. And I think that if we can obtain that from the community, I think we'll be in a better position. Our kids will be in a better position to be successful. And our rate of juvenile delinquency will go down. I'm almost sure of that. But they have to give, get the directions that they need to do that. Because in my personal opinion, the schools are not doing that. Mm -hmm. And the obvious reason is because now it's no longer a part of the program. Right. It's voluntary. So I think at that point, we're going in the wrong direction. So we need to change that around. We, uh, we have free workshops every month at uh, Mildred Terry Library every second Saturday of the month. And we've been doing that for the last five years. It's free. So people can come in. We we'll talk about so it's got, a, it's free to any student any student any and, age. It's, and it's also free to the general public adults as well oh adults as well okay. exactly we spend an hour talking about the inventing journey how to go through that what it takes to be successful and then if they want more information then of course there's other membership involved mm -hmm. but we give them the basic knowledge that they need to either pursue their idea or not to pursue their idea and it's amazing because some of the people that come through says I got this idea. Oh, and I haven't seen it in the store, so I'm going to go ahead and spend a lot of money and try to develop that. But what they don't understand is that a lot of things that you may not see here in the Columbus or on the East Coast, they have it on the West Coast. And if you don't know how to do the research to find that out, you're going to be wasting a lot of money. So we do extensive research on finding similar products that are out there. And we'll go back and tell me, look, Here's a picture, here it is on the internet, they're selling it, or here is a patent that's already out there that talks about the same idea you have. And then they say, okay, well then, forget about it. But there are some that we have been working with that do have products that are not on the market. Mm -hmm. And we're currently working with them to further develop their product. It's a journey. It's not a quick, a quick thing. It takes usually about two years. But you gotta but start to have somewhere. have somebody help, you know, an individual. Exactly through this journey and give them guidance. And we have that right here in Columbus. Absolutely, absolutely. Like I said, we have free workshops. Uh, people want to contact us. Yeah, where, what's, um, what's a good contact? Uh, well, our phone number is 706-225-9587. And they can visit our website, because we have pictures of the student winners over the last couple of years. Okay. Uh, a way to get involved in our organization, a newsletter, because we print out newsletters uh, for our members and non-members every month as well. Okay. And our website is cpcinventorsassociation.org. Okay. And they can go to that website, see what we've been doing, see what the kids receive awards and plaques. We got pictures of all of that. So if a student wants to become involved and wants mm -hmm. to do something, there's information on there for that. Absolutely. If they want to go to the library, um, you know, you said it's the second Saturday of every month? Second Saturday of every month at the Mildred Terry Library okay. on Veterans Park. Right. right. Wow. There's in, so there's information there. If mm -hmm. somebody wants to volunteer to help. Oh, please call. <laughs> we, need, <laughs> we need to help. We want to reach more schools. We want to do a lot more things yeah. with the kids, not just during this time period where the science fair is going to be on February 7th. We want to do things year round. Right. Because we don't want to lo lose the kids' enthusiasm. Because they're enthused, they're excited, you know, when we go in, then when we don't go back, then their mind goes on to something else. And we don't want that to happen. So we want to continue to work with them, help them create ideas, because they come up with, oh, you can imagine the ideas that these kids come up I with. Something imagine. I would never thought about. That would be just so, that would be so exciting just to be involved in that, in that process. Yes, so yes. that's got to be very rewarding for the, you know, for you and all the volunteers that work with your organization. Oh, absolutely. And of course, as I said earlier, I mean, the businesses will develop. Because right, right now, they're having a problem finding trained individuals. Mm -hmm. And if we can produce individuals and students that can think and be able to process information and come up with solutions,
then they benefit. Right. They benefit. So we're hoping that they will help us expand in what we're trying to do here in the community. And the businesses need to jump on board and they need to help any way they can. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether, you know, becoming a sponsor or, or volunteering or if there's something that they can offer. I mean, at least, you know, at least call, at least, you know, exactly. contact you guys. Yeah. And I'll give that information again. It's area okay. code 706-225-9587. Okay. And the website again is CPC Inventors Association okay. org, and they can finish uh, and show that uh, well, they can view the information about our organization, how they can contact us, okay, and information about our meetings every month, and the location is always on that website, and the dates, everything is there. So we welcome all to come, talk about your idea. We'll give information about how they could develop their idea and help them be successful. That is, that's great. And I had no idea this was here. Yeah, that's what we're trying to get the word out. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's yeah. what you gotta do, reach those kids, reach those young adults. Um, you know, there's, there's more to it than just the, the classroom mm -hmm. learning. And I... Yeah, and now with the cutting out of the STEM program, Right. To, in terms of students volunteering, that's, I don't know why they came up with doing that, but there's other ways of bypassing that, and that's where we come in. Now, um, your event in February, yeah. is, is that open well, that's, to the? That's the school's event. That's just the school's Muskogee event. Muskogee County, they do Muskogee that Muskogee County. County Science and Engineering Fair. Okay. But we're just co-sponsors along with CSU. Okay. So we're able to go in, we, we're on the agenda, we're on the, on the information, mm -hmm. and we choose three of those students. And then we present the awards to the students in front of their classmates with the principal and the parents and the teachers. That's great. They're there and um, they enjoy it because they get a lot of free gifts. So oh, sure. Like, yeah. Like well, it sounds like they're getting a lot of support from the local businesses. Oh, and that's yeah. exactly what oh, yeah. we need. I, I always in, invite the parents to come to our meetings and bring your kids with you mm -hmm. and um, let's just talk. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Well, thank you for all that you're doing. For well, thank you very much for having me. I kids. appreciate yes, it. Yes, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it, and, and good luck with everything. And please, I encourage you to call, visit the website, um, and get involved. Yes, Get please. involved in the children in this community. I mean, they're our future. They're our future leaders. That's right. They definitely are. That's right. Thanks again. I appreciate you being here. Thank and you. And I appreciate all of you joining us, and we will see you on the next edition of Ion Columbus.